about them. I'm just briefing what we have done. Still students are joining. Okay, so for this syllabus, initially we have just uh, discussed about the uh, basics of this syllabus, what is the course objective outcome, what is the course content in the syllabus, then what books we have to reference, refer all these things we have discussed a little bit about the electronics and electrical, just fundamental basics of this uh, course we have discussed. So uh, today only we will start the main content of this syllabus. So there is no issue if you have not attended, you can also go through it. Yeah, so for this uh, basic of electronics and communication engineering, uh, I will be your for section E and F, I will be your teacher for throughout the semester. So I have to conduct all these things for all the evaluation, all these things for your two sections, section E and F. And uh, in this, I have mentioned my mail ID and contact number at any instant. If you want any type of help, then you can contact me. <coughs> Okay, so basic objectives of this course is basic understanding of the electronics components and uh, some cir some circuitries are also there and basics of some what is communication fundamental of what is the requirement of communication some little brief of your uh, digital electronics like logic gate, boolean algebra, some logic circuits that part is also there so basically this basic electronics and communication engineering covers all the fundamental related to your ece branch electronics and communication branch so in this after completion of this course you will be able to identify the electronics component you will be able to use the components because when you want to use any certain component you must be aware of the uh, characteristics of that component you, you should know the behavior you should know the limitations all these things for that component that only then only you can use that components so basically we will uh, after completion of this course you will be able to identify the basic components and you will be able to make basic circuits for any particular application so associated lab is also there so in the lab also we can uh, learn a lot of things about the practical uh, a practical a practical accessibility of all these components and all these uh, circuits so uh, in in this syllabus we have five module in this syllabus so in the first module we will discuss uh, komal kumari komal kumari uh, are you having any problem you are disconnect disconnected again and again Komal Kumari. Yes, ma'am. She is disconnected um, again Why? and again. Ma'am, I don't know. Uh, do you have any connect connectivity issue, Komal? Uh, course we whatever the morning the first module we will have the pn junction diode uh, basics uh, i think basic background of pn junction diode it is a little more or less you are acquainted with this so uh, here we will not go into the very deeper into that uh, p type material n type material that uh, conductivity then in, uh, that's uh, concentration gradient in much more detail we are not going into it because these things i think you have covered in your 12th so basically here in this subject we are having the basics understanding of pn junction diode its characteristics when you use the pn junction diode how its behavior will be and uh, then uh, how depending upon the temperature a uh, little bit uh, about the capacitance capacity effect of the diode then uh, what is load line these things we will discuss and after that we will have some that application like rectifier and uh, voltage regulator circuit um, using the pn junction diode we will design for this this much we have to cover in module one so there are several types of diodes so out of which only zener diode a normal pn junction crystal diode we are going to study and in the second module we will have the transistor 
the next most important component of electronics this is the very basic of all the electronic circuit and all the things just hello uh there is no pending request i am not able to see whatever the request uh, i am getting i am allowing okay okay so we will discuss about the transistor in the second module two type of transistor we will discuss one is your field effect transistor and another is bipolar junction transistor and in the third module some circuitry we will discuss that is oscillator circuit and op amp circuit and in the fourth module we will have some digital person and fifth module is having some communication purpose so books i have uh, whatever i have told in the previous classes so um, for this uh, Uh, module four, and we'll have some digital electronics book. So, in digital electronics book, any of the digital electronics book you can follow because this is a very basic fundamental. So, it is similar content will be there in any book. And in the fifth module, some fundamental of communication is there. So, like any communication book, the first chapter will be the fundamental part that will be there. So, if you will not get the book, then I can provide the content to you also for this communication purpose. No, you don't have to um, take much more of uh, concern because uh, you are the IT students and triple E students. So, this uh, communication subject will not be uh, there in the future. So, you may not have that book also. So, I will give that uh, portion to you, either the soft copy of the book or some notes I can give. Okay. So next for the Ma'am, in first semester we would be having three modules or six all. No, this all modules you are having in the first semester. Then within tw March twenty five we have to complete complete all this module. So for the first three modules, actually this is the electronic core electronics part. So here you can follow the book. Uh, here the textbook is given that Milliman, Milliman and Halkiers integrated electronics analog and digital circuit system. So actually this book is a very uh, informative book, but little bit tough to understand for the student because this is given in a very compact uh, manner. So it is difficult to understand for the beginner. So you can follow this book as a textbook, but for understanding this content, you can have any other book. So uh, I think this uh, reference book. robot l boylston this book is a very uh, nice book and uh, many examples are also given and elaborately the things are uh, represented there so you can use this uh, robot l boylston book for understanding the first two two three modules also or you can uh, follow any internet uh, source like uh, nptel video lectures are also there so nptel video lectures means this uh, video total uh, for, for a particular course the whole uh, uh, course will be taught by any iit professors and uh, it is uh, freely available online you can access this nptel video lecture so if you want to go much more deeper into that particular part or if you are not getting uh, it from the uh, from our class then you can follow that also if you have time you can apply so many subjects are there so you if you are planning to have the higher studies or uh, gate exam in future so then uh, you can have the uh, much more deeper uh, inside the subject so you can spend your extra time by following this nptel video lecture also there are some certified course also then the nptel video lecture you can beyond your syllabus like all the subjects it is not possible to have in your uh, course structure so if you uh, after first semester you will be uh, aware of all those things so if you think that this uh, syllabus will be beneficial for me as per the placement point of view or for the higher study point of view and that subject is not there in my curriculum then you can in the extra time you can uh, Uh, learn that subject from NPTEL video lecture 
also the certified course are also there so you can uh, learn the subject from online lecture you can uh, uh, and that will be so you will be accessed by some quiz test and some uh, exam from that NPTEL also and you can get a certificate so there are various courses are there uh, that is uh, from the government of india so iit's professor they are providing that course so you can have that course uh, any other course also not only this course and um, many courses are there so if you have the time in the free time you can uh, use that uh, source or resource also so for this assessment we have already discussed so we will have the mids actually pre previously when this uh, assessment is for the offline mode in the online mode we will have 50 and 50 so 50 marks will be for the end semester and rest 50 marks we will access from assess from the quiz test so at the end of each model one quiz test will be conducted and 50 marks will be uh, 10 marks will be given to for uh, for every module so uh, five by five quiz will have 50 marks and 50 marks will be for the end semester in the online mode exam so basically yes then end sem will be a mcq type or written uh, it will depend upon the situation if situation will be normal like uh, just before 15, uh, 15 days we are uh, uh, we are expecting that you will be having the offline class but uh, the situation is now changed so if it will be in the online mode exam then it will be most probably it will be mcq type of question because first semester, uh, first semester questions, actually first semester, uh, it is a common paper. So you are have, uh, we are having six section means uh, approximately uh, 360, more than 360 students are there. So, so for so much of, so many number of students, it is difficult to have a um, uh, subjective question and uh, to evaluate. So it is, uh, uh, if possible, <coughs> if it is in the online mode exam will be there, it may be uh, mostly it is uh, MCQ type of questions. If it will be offline exam, then it will be uh, subjective question. Thank you, ma'am. Every module will get uh, same amount of uh, mark. It will be equally distributed. From each module, we will have to uh, give 10 marks of for the end semester also. For every module, uniformly, the questions will be distributed. So, we require the prior knowledge for like uh, KCL, Kirchhoff's current law, voltage law, basics of your current voltage, resistance, then what are the properties of your conductor, insulator, semiconductor some mathematics like derivative and integration these are the prerequisites for this subject which is all which all of you are acquainted in the 12th class so there is no there will be no issue of understanding this subject so it will be very uh, easier for you <clears throat> so little bit as a in the preliminary class we have discussed about what is the basic difference between electronics and electrical so basically in electronics we deal with the low power devices or small uh, we use the voltage maximum uh, like uh, 5 volt or 12 volt of uh, ac voltage we use for the uh, electronic circuit basically we use most of the um, electronic devices we did with the dc voltage so if, we, if even if we are using the ac in that case also we are mostly we are using only up some up to 12 volt of voltage but in case of your electrical circuits we require the high voltage like 230 volt or more then uh, basically by using the electronic circuit we can i will share these things okay so you can go through it so in electronic circuits we can uh, design the intelligent system also intelligent system means the uh, the system which will have the ability to take the decision <clears throat> And basically in electrical circuit, we don't have that kind of facility. In electrical circuit, we have to run or we have to uh, operate high voltage devices like you want to rotate a motor, you want to um, uh, like uh, we want to give some pressure. So that kind of heavy things can be conducted through electrical circuits. So nowadays every devices in our day-to-day -day life, many, de many devices whatever we are using, all are combination of your electronics, electrical as well as your uh, mechanical uh, devices. All the interdisciplinary engineer will combiningly forming a particular device. For example, suppose um, uh, well, uh, we have taken the example of a washing machine. In the washing machine, the drum has to rotate 
it has to put a, a, this, this much of load it has, it has to carry so it has to rotate uh, things so for it has to take the water from the motor so there are a lots of electrical things are required motor rotor all these things are required but to take the decision how much power how much water level has to be maintained for which rotation how much pressure it has to take in so this decision will be taken through the motherboard the control panel of that uh, washing machine nowadays automatic washing machines are there so we have to uh, once we switch on the washing machine then it will take its own decision up to how much water level it has to maintain after that the what flow of water will be restricted then it will rotate up to how much time it will rotate then up to how much time it will have to maintain the pressure how how much time how much duration it will take to swing all these things decision will be taken through the electronic circuit the decision making circuit we have to use that is from for electronic circuit so all are interdisciplinary okay so you should have the knowledge of that electronics and electrical all these things and it people you are you have to also design the software part like when we are making the decision making circuit obviously electronic circuit we are using but uh, that uh, uh, coding part coding part actually you want to uh, program a particular shape so that programming part all these things will be for the, for the part of the software engineer and this program has to be uh, integrated in a circuit like uh, it may be a chip where the program has to be installed then only the hardware can be operated so this is the part of the electronics people so every everyone should be involved in a particular device okay so we have some examples of electronics and electrical component so whenever we go for any uh, subject or analysis as we are the engineer we should have the very basic knowledge also so uh, we uh, for understanding a device which in the inside the device if you open a tv or if you open the computer you can have several devices okay simply if you uh, open your tv if you uh, ever if, uh, if you have ever seen that uh, Uh, either open tv or open computer in that case you can observe that a uh, lots of circuitry are there so every different boards are there so every board is a circuit which is having a particular type of operation okay so various circuits we have to like suppose power circuits it requires a particular suppose your tv requires a particular amount of voltage so this limit of that uh, maximum limit will be also there minimum limit will be also there so within that limit of voltage only you tv will operate uh, suitably so for that controlling of power there must be a circuit like for your uh, for your video card video card means how the video signals are received and it will be uh, projected in the tv that video card is also a circuit like your sound card sound card where the sound quality will be maintained and the sound signal will be processed it will be a sound card so various part of the tv will be having a different type of circuit if you assemble then it becomes a device so for understanding a device we require various circuits okay and every circuit consists of some some components basic components like your resistor capacitor inductor diode all these things and beyond this components and circuits and device we will have some instruments we have to require some instruments also like some measuring instruments are there some display instruments are there some testing instruments will be there so various instruments are also required so for understanding the basic of this electronics uh, subject we should know some components then we can go for the circuitry and usually this uh, theory part of the this instrument part is not there in your syllabus because this is the major this is the measurement part is a different uh, specific subject is there for the electronic student so just the uh, you should uh, you, you should have the ability to uh, you should ever uh, you should know how to use that that components like suppose cro no need to understand the what is the inside the cro what is the uh, process going on inside the cro or how the circuit is working you should know how to use the cro so that the basic experiments or basic things you can do like for example multimeter you are using a multimeter so you have to use that multimeter you have to measure the current voltage resistance all these things using the multimeter so there is no for the for the scope of this syllabus it is not required to understand the uh, inside of that that uh, multimeter like some instruments some measuring instruments some display devices we will use 
so for this scope of this syllabus we will have some basic of the components its characteristics behavior all these things we will study okay so <clears throat> there are various components these are some exam pictorial representation we have uh, just uh, displayed here so some these are some registers these are some ic's okay uh, this is integrated circuit these are some capacitors led all these are the electronics components which will which will we are going to use in our laboratory so these are some circuits so symbolical representation of all these components are there in the circuit so there are various circuit this kind of circuit we can use so physically the circuits will look like this these are some measuring instruments okay now then some devices okay so the components overall the components are divided into active component and passive component so the components which is uh, which requires some external sources for its operation are actually the active components for example your diode until and unless we are not providing the bias voltage in the diode the diode is having there is no conductivity in the diode or we cannot use the diode okay like transistor this diode transistor operational amplifier this silicon control rectifier a lots of components are there which are called as your active components and passive components means which are uh, used in the circuit but it doesn't require any external source in that uh, for their operation for example your resistor capacitor inductor all these things so this is the basic difference between your active and passive components so these are some pictorial representation of physical appearance of your diode transistor silicon control rectifier capacitor inductor resistor all these things so there are various type of diode are there so here we are going to discuss about the normal pn junction diode and one of the specific diode that is the zener diode which we are going to use but uh, this uh, this should be uh, at least you are the engineering student so you should just identify which diode is this like if if this type of symbol is there then this is a led if you are understanding one circuit and here the symbol of diode is like this then it is a led light emitting diode it will emit the diode if just the arrow is inward it is a photodiode okay and this scotty diode tunnel diode barrector diode these are uh, you hard you will be i think you are hardly it will be of uh, for useful for your you people because this is basically used in some uh, particular electronic circuit like when you are designing the uh, communication circuit when you are designing the opto electronic circuit there it will be used so this led photodiode and zener diode are most commonly used diode in the day to day life you are having the led in every um, uh, type of indicator where it is indicated led is there <coughs> so today Uh, yeah uh, one more thing just a basic what is the basic difference between your insulator semiconductor and uh, conductor so as you know the it is basically classified based upon the band gap between the conduction band and valence band so if the band gap is more then there is no possibility of uh, or it will take a lots of energy from for the charge carrier to move from one band to other band from the valence band to conduction band if you want to transfer one charge carrier then it will take a very huge amount of energy because the band gap is more so the, usually this insulator will uh, usually the insulator uh, is there is no conduction of charge in the insulator we say so we know the example of insulator like your rubber dry wood all these are insulator and uh, this uh, conductor means the band gap is almost zero or we can say conduction band and valence band they are uh, overlapping each other so here the Uh, current conduction or the charge carrier con flow of your charge carrier is very easier in the conductor so once you apply a little amount of your voltage also little amount of electric field also then also the charge carrier, charge conduction which takes place so uh, you know the all the metals which are very good conductor of your electricity and in between this the semiconductor is there so in the semiconductor band gap is there just like the insulator so sometime you can use as this semiconductor as a insulator also and sometime we can use this band gap is of smaller amount the band gap is there so with the application of external energy we can uh, overcome this band gap 
so we can make this semiconductor as a conductor also so its conductivity of the semiconductor lies in between the insulator and conductor so the conductivity there is we have the ability to change the conductivity of the semiconductor so that is the beauty of the semiconductor that's why the semiconductor is mostly uh, used in the um, designing of this modern electronic era so semiconductor here we can change the conductivity by applying your bias voltage okay as you know by applying the uh, some external things you can uh, change the conductivity and we can uh, that uh, overcome this band gap also so this is the semiconductor so this is one example it is given like suppose this is the diamond so the what is the band gap for silicon what is the band gap for germanium what is the band gap so as you know silicon and germanium these two are the most we used semiconductor okay most widely used semiconductor is silicon and germanium so here in case of silicon the band gap uh, for overcoming the band gap the energy is your 106 kJ per mole and band gap for uh, germanium is 64 kJ so the band gap is little bit less than um, in case of germanium in comparison to your silicon okay so if you say which mat which uh, components we are taking as the semiconductor so in the this is a part of the periodic table so here we can see uh, the silicon germanium then this is your tin these are the uh, materials which is used as the semiconductor of this group we are using the semiconductor so sometime if you uh, and you know uh, the there are four outer electrons in the energy diagram with this silicon and germanium so it will create four covalent bond okay this concept is known to you and sometime when you make the com com uh, combination or the compound of the element of third group and element of fifth group there also the semiconductor can be semiconductor material can be formed like for for example the uh, aluminium and arsenide okay aluminium and arsenide if you combine this this will also a semiconductor material like your gallium arsenide this is also a semiconductor material so indium phosphide this is also a semiconductor material material like for example if you take the second group element and Uh, the sixth group element and make the combination then in that case also we can have the uh, structure same similar structure of your your semiconductor and it can be used then it is the duty of the uh, device engineer those who are working in the area of only the that uh, but particularly the device part they analyze when we take the gallium arsenide or when we take the alum, uh, aluminum arsenide which material is having which kind of characteristics and which will be suitable for uh, which type of application it is the basic uh, working of a device engineer those who are working on the electronic devices it is the research domain okay now, like for example uh, for example they will compare the characteristics okay we will have that characteristics uh, comparison little bit okay for example let's i am showing that um, suppose we are having the characteristics okay germanium silicon and gallium arsenide three characteristics are compared here okay so if we have compared these three characteristics we can see that germanium is uh, germanium is having the characteristics like this okay what does it indicate uh, very earlier with a very small amount of voltage we are having a significant amount of current okay likewise for the gallium arsenide if we require a little bit more voltage for getting a significant amount of current so this is the difference how we are getting component to component likewise in the reverse characteristics also we are having different type of components and then it is the other things that uh, switch type of characteristics is required for uh, ideal behavior that will be uh, studied and also the um, also the availability about the material then uh, we should uh, commercially whether it is available or not uh, what is the price of the material all these things will come into picture then we will decide which uh, elements has to be used so likewise from all the material usually silicon is a very widely used popular popular material because first of all silicon is very low cost okay silicon is very low low cost device so low cost material so it is very widely used 
and one more thing silicon can be oxidized to form the silicon dioxide which is a insulating layer so when we require a insulating layer in any device in that case directly silicon can be used as the insulating material so when we take a piece of silicon uh, semiconductor material like silicon a piece of silicon and in a part in a uh, in a particular part suppose we require to make it as the uh, insulating layer so in that case we can oxidize that particular part and we can form the silicon dioxide which will be very useful things when you those people who are working on that uh, uh, actually the inside of this uh, Uh, semiconductor semiconductor device or microelectronics in that case it is a very important concept so it is also a good feature of silicon and uh, usually silicon can be used in very high temperature also okay because silicon can be used in very high temperature also whereas germanium if you use the germanium in a high temperature then its characteristics will not be faithful faithful means as for the requirement whatever the characteristic should be stable that will be very in high temperature so silicon is preferred for the high temperature uh, applications <coughs> try to join in time okay it is already half an hour more than half an hour so you people are still you are joining so it is uh, just creating a uh, disturbance okay so my was just disconnected okay so uh, <clears throat> like your gallium arsenide is giving also a very good behavior but uh, this is very costly material so it is used in specific application like wherever the opto electronic application opto electronics means electronics which is deal with the optical part like fiber optics communication if you uh, like have a laser communication if you are transmitting the information through the laser signal or through the led or through the fiber optic module so there the through the light signal if you are transmitting the uh, information this is the opto electronic devices has to be used so in that type of application the gallium arsenide or indium phosphide is used so this is basically the idea of your semiconductor material so today we are going to discuss about the p type and n type p n junction basically so all of you know what is p type semiconductor and n type semiconductor so basically if you classify the semiconductor then it will be either intrinsic semiconductor or extrinsic semiconductor okay like uh, okay so if you take the semiconductor one is called as your intrinsic another is your extrinsic intrinsic means this is the pure form okay this is the impure form okay so intrinsic semiconductor means just to take a piece of silicon or piece of germanium or piece of your um, gallium arsenide so there is no additional things we have added there so this is the intrinsic one so in the intrinsic semiconductor uh, there is no conductivity okay simply there is no conductivity just piece of uh, just uh, material which is there is no use okay so it is a semiconductor material but we have to increase its conductivity or its ability to conduct so we have to dope that uh, you, have, you require the doping concept doping means what Addi adding some additional uh, material or additional uh, uh, impurity atoms to that particular semiconductor pure semiconductor to make it your n type or p type of semiconductor so you know what is n type or p type of semiconductor so like silicon if you take the silicon in the outer in the outer uh, we are having only four electrons four electrons in the outer band of the silicon okay so when you take the lattice structure of the silicon okay so there is every uh, this outer electron is combined with the any other uh, if this is a silicon material then we will have the some four electrons so it will have the covalent bond and this kind of structure will have okay but uh, if you want to increase the conductivity for conductivity there must be some free charge carrier so to access the to get the free charge carrier what we will do we have to add some additional atom 
like if you want to make a n type of material okay if you want to n type of n type of semiconductor material so for the n type of semiconductor material just hold on one minute हेलो हाँ मैम हाँ मैम देते मैं बैठती है लेकिन आज जो ना वो एक्चुअली अभी घर से ले रहे हैं क्योंकि अभी दस बजे से मेरे क्लास चलता है यहाँ पे तो